<coughs> Namaste everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining in this video. So this is the first recorded class after we had a break for two weeks where I was not able to conduct live classes due to a few personal issues. So in the recording, in the last recording, we had or I had rather spoken about Rahu in the 10th house and how it impacts you and your chart. So this is about Ketu in the 4th house, okay? Because Rahu in the 10th house will obviously bring Ketu into the 4th house, okay? But before we begin, let's start with the Shanti Mantra from the Upanishads. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunakatu Sahaviryankara Vavahai Tejasvi Nadadhi Tamastu Mavida Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Okay. So... <clears throat> Ketu in the fourth house, you know, we know that Ketu, uh, sorry, the fourth house, it rules the breast and chest cavity. And uh, Ketu is also the Chidra Karaka. Okay, Chidra Karaka means something that pierces. Okay. So, as a result, the native may receive a wound to the upper part of the body. And uh, this could include something voluntary like the application of a tattoo or something elective like, you know, removal of a wart or something necessary like, you know, excisation of a skin cancer, okay? In uh, my case or in my in the charts that I have seen, K2 in the fourth house usually indicates breast can cancer, okay? I've seen a lot of breast cancer cases with K2 being in the fourth house. Okay, so if you have a fourth house K2, it's very important to check for breast cancer. Okay, and uh, you know, given sufficient astrological support, for example, if this K2 is associated or aspected by Mars or the 8th Lord, it can indicate major operations such as mastectomies or open heart surgeries. Okay, for a, uh, my spouse has Ketu in the fourth house and she finds it very difficult to let out her emotions. Okay, her emotions get stuck. And every time she is angry or she is sad, I just have to, you know, I have to rub her chest vigorously so that she prevents from choking. Okay, she has a tendency of getting choked with emotions. And this has, this has a lot to do with Ketu in the fourth house. Okay, now... With Ketu in the fourth, the mother is always going to be problematic in the native's eyes. You know, either the mother will be absent or unknown or unaffectionate, unhealthy, you know, unreliable, unstable. Maybe have maybe a new age cook or even a religious freak. And uh, the mother may be scattered, you know, ungrounded or simply unavailable in many ways. Okay. And uh, much of the native's desire to command attention and respect may be a compensation for this lack of maternal affection. And I've seen this happening in my in the in this case of my spouse. Okay. And with respect to family origins, there may be something about the maternal lineage that the native would like to forget. Okay. And from the perspective of gynaeology, the trail might grow murkier the further back mm -hmm. into the mother's side one tries to go. Okay. Now Ketu also represents ambivalence. So in the fourth house, it suggests that the native cares very little for basic education, ethics, or morality. That means in some essential way, these people are not grounded psychologically, nor they are comfortable in their own skin. And as a result, they need the approval of others in order to feel good. Okay. So such a native may feel very little appreciation for his or her family or community or tribe or even for the country. Okay, along with the values that are attributed to each of these. These people, they lack accountability to anyone. And they may feel psychologically homeless, rootless and separated from the traditions that typically, you know, ground an individual. Okay. Now, K2 represents breakage. Okay, so the fourth house is the house of education. Right. So the education foundations of the native are shaky. They are weak and the native usually wanders from place to place, you know, that leads to a change in residence or school or even country, okay, looking for that comfort zone where he or she can feel psychologically secure and at home, okay. 
And with respect to education, the native is usually ambivalent or, you know, lacks vision about learning. Okay. Such natives may not recognize the value of education, nor appreciate the need to complete their studies, you know, nor bother to acquire certificates or licenses or diplomas or degrees, which are necessary to pursue a trade or a profession. Now, the nodes always represent the foreign element. Okay. Rahu represents, you know, Rahu represents the people outside your country. Ketu represents the people outside your community. This is a difference that you have to name, you have to remember. Okay, Rahu represents people outside your country. Okay. Ketu represents people outside your community. Okay. So Ketu in the fourth usually suggests an education which is outside the community, maybe in a different state. It could also mean international education. Okay. But usually I've seen this, you know coming from a different state okay it could also indicate an elite school different from that is attended by common people okay and uh, in any case the education of a native may convince the native to believe that he or she is different from normal folks with a lack of empathy for the masses okay and uh, from a mundane point of view these natives they may own a dwelling whose foundation or basement is vulnerable or Usually these natives may favor no fixed dwelling, you know, choosing instead of instead to move about. That means, for example, living in a recreational vehicle. Okay. And uh, in the worst possible scenario, these people may be literally homeless, for example, with no fixed address. You know, the prime example of this is sadhu. Okay. How do sadhus what how do sadhus live their lives? They take a vow never to sleep in the same place twice. That means avoiding any attachment to a home. Immigration is another example. The immigrant is another example of someone who surrenders his homeland, you know, Ketu in the fourth to seek career prospects elsewhere, which is Rahu in the tenth. <laughs> okay. Now, the fourth house also rules vehicles and Ketu is multicolored. So this suggests that the native, the rides of the native may be two-toned or painted with intricate designs or display, you know, bumper stickers with a religious or spiritual message. And this also includes military vehicles, you know, typically painted in Model colors for the purpose of camouflage. You've seen how the army vehicles look like, right? <coughs> now, the fourth house is the house of happiness, and it is also the tenth from the seventh house of partnerships. So, Ketu's placement in the fourth house implies that the native may be apathetic or ambivalent or even uninterested or unsupportive of the partner's career. Okay. And for most part, this will usually refer to the marital partner, but it, it can also apply to the business partners. Okay. And uh, by the same logic, the native may be very unconcerned about the actions his partner performs, his or her partner performs in public, the reputation that develops as a consequence of those actions, and the status that the partner may acquire in the social arena. Okay. So we take up a few case studies like we always do for, you know, for this. Just hold on. Let me share the screen. Okay. I hope you can see this. So this is Johnny Carson. Okay. Johnny Carson. So he was an American talk show host and comedian who was best known for his 30 years of hosting The Tonight Show. You know, Carson received six Emmy Awards and he was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame in 1987 and he called himself as the great Carsoni at the age of 14 okay and he started performing card tricks in local variety shows he saw very little service in the navy during the second world war but he entertained and he learned beatboxing okay at college he got a degree in radio and speech with a minor in physics and he began his career in radio and uh, you know and tv talk shows in new york and he became host of The Tonight Show in 1962. And by the mid-1970s, he was earning almost $4 million a year, okay, from late-night television, okay, which was very popular during that time. Now, politically, his, you know, he was a liberal, okay. But Carlson was, you know, Carlson was private and he never voiced his opinions about the Vietnam War or race relationships or extramarital sex on his show. He was married four times. Okay, he was married four times and uh, <coughs> he was married four times and 
his relationships were always volatile okay because you know his relationships were a combination of alcoholism abuse and neglect and he had three sons one of whom died in a car accident he was also an amateur astronomer and drummer and he was very close friends with both carl sagan and buddy rich okay but then people say that he was mean spirited or competitive and he had major fights with wayne newton or joan rivers and other stars now despite his success as an entertainer many of his investments hit a brick wall that means you know he had a failed bid for a hotel or casino in vegas a restaurant chain that flopped and a major investment in the doomed delorean car but he acquired an impressive art collection and established several major charities one among them which was the largest in hollywood dedicated to you know supporting children education and health services now he was a lifelong heavy smoker and he died of complications arising from emphysema okay now you look at this chart of john carlson no planets occupy the same signs as the nodes but some of the five intervening signs are empty so this is a very potential kala sarpa and it is a veloma type that means the easy to deal with one type with all the planets moving towards ketu so ketu becomes that initial point of analysis rahu is being aspected by saturn so this creates a form of dosha but this dosha is manageable because you see saturn which is exalted okay saturn is exalted in libra all right now galson was born into venus dasha and jupiter under dasha so venus is there in the second house but it forms new yogas and jupiter is in the third house in its own rashi where it forms the gajakesari yoga with the moon his chart also has a few other yogas like sasha yoga is the most prominent you know arising from an exalted saturn in the lagna and there it combines with mercury to create raja yoga and with the sun to form dhana yoga okay now the sun and mercury combine to form buddhaditya yoga and given the strength and placement saturn dominates this chart and exerts primary influence upon the kala sarpa okay the rahu the rashi dispositor of rahu is the moon but saturn aspects both rahu and the moon and furthermore saturn owns the nakshatra in which rahu sits so saturn is ketu's rashi dispositor and also associates with ketu's nakshatra lord which is the sun <laughs> okay now apart from saturn's dominance rahu also exerts a major influence on carlson's persona look at the ascendant you know sun mercury all are occupying swati which is a rahu rule nakshatra and one of the symbols for swati is a young young shoot swaying in the wind which suggests the oscillatory and restless nature of rahu now people with significant swati influences often struggle with issue, issues of self determination independence and boundaries so relationships become one of their typical battlegrounds and this was certainly carson's case the other feature which is common to swati and rahu is a certain bias for hyperbolic behavior that means a tendency to go into overdrive for example a person who cannot sit still or cannot stop talking or cannot relax okay so these people they often seem compelled to project themselves onto the world with maniac energy as if they are feared you know as if they feared that to be still for a while might invite death to take their place and with saturn and rahu so dominant in the ascendant the person easily falls victim to vata dosha okay so in carson's case his restlessness provoked heavy drinking and smoking and uh, this drinking habit destroyed his first three marriages and also his smoking actually killed him okay now we know that kala sarpa brings to the forefront any exaggerated planets and you look at carlson's chart it has two exaggerated planets the debilitated sun and the exalted saturn which are both in the lagna in the sign of libra <laughs> now many of the pivotal events in carlson's life it occurred during the periods of rahu and ketu that means planets which are linked to the and also in the and also in the periods of planets which are linked to the nodes or planets in exaggerated condition okay he ran his moon dasha from the age 14 to 24 and during this period carson served in the navy where he learned beatboxing and then he attended university earning a bachelor of arts degree in radio speech and physics during march mars dasha from age 24 to 31 he began his career in radio and tv now rahu dasha from the age 31 to 49 was his breakout period in which he endeared himself to the late american viewers tv viewers that is in rahu saturn he became the host of the night show 
premiering on October 1, 1962, at which time the nodal axis had completed two full cycles to realign with itself and transiting Saturn was in Capricorn. And during the same Bhukti, during the same Antardasha, he divorced his first wife and, re and remarried in 1963. And uh, by the mid-1970s, Carson was earning a huge amount of, you know, $4 million annually in revenue. In, uh, during Rahu's son at the age of 46, he divorced his second wife and married his third one. Okay. Now, Jupiter Dasha at the age of 49 to 65, it saw it uh, witnessed the continu continuation of his late night talk show popularity. But then he continued to experience certain upheavals in his personal life. During Jupiter Moon, he divorced his third wife and married his fourth. And during Jupiter Rahu, his third son died in a car accident. Okay. Saturn Dasha ran from the age of 65 to his death. And in Saturn Saturn, he, you know, he retired in May 1992, at which time transiting Saturn had made one full cycle since first hosting the Tonight Show back in Capricorn again. Okay, he died during Saturn Mars on the 23rd of January 2005, when transiting Ketu was on his natal sun, and the transiting sun was on his natal Ketu. Okay. Let's look at the next chart. So this is Margaret Thatcher. She was, of course, the Prime Minister of, of England. Okay. And she was the leader of the Conservative Party, right? From uh, 1975 to 1990. And she remained the Prime Minister of the UK from 1979 to 1990, right? <clears throat> and she was the first female and the longest serving British Prime Minister of the 20th century. Okay. She was also dubbed as the Iron Lady by a Soviet, uh, Soviet journalist in reference to her uncompromising politics and leadership style. And as the Prime Minister, she implemented policies that came to be known as Thatcherism. Okay. Now, uh, her father was a grocer and her mother was a dressmaker. So Thatcher became more interested in politics while attending university. Okay. And she earned a degree in chemistry, but worked only a few years in that field. All right. <clears throat> and studying law in her spare time she qualified for the bar at the age of 28 and she was elected to the parliament at the age of 34 and received a cabinet post as secretary for education at the age of 44 and when she cancelled free milk to children in public schools angry critics responded with cries of Maggie Thatcher milk snatcher okay so she won the conservative party leadership at the age of 49 and responding to complaints about her tone she undertook voice coaching in 1979, she became the first woman to be elected as the Prime Minister of England. Okay, And in an era of economic austerity, within a couple of years, her approval rating fell to about 23%. But then the Falklands War erupted with Argentina and her decisive handling of the conflict improved her popular appeal. She won re-election later that year and again five years later, an unprecedented three-term run as the Prime Minister. Okay. Eventually, public opinion turned against her and she resigned in 1990. She wrote a book, Statecraft, and then quietly faded away from public life. You know, and later on, she was her health was also failing and she reportedly was suffering from dementia. Okay. She suffered a series of minor strokes and uh, finally, a cancer of the blood bladder killed her on April 8, 2013. Now look at this chart of Thatcher. No planet occupies the same signs of the nodes as the nodes, but then all the five intervening signs are occupied. So this is a perfect Kala Sarpa. Okay, we have not had any example of perfect Kala Sarpa till now. This is perfect Kala Sarpa. Okay, so it's very rare and it's a Viloma type. That means all the planets are moving towards K2, which is the easier Kala Sarpa to overcome. And But this is the initial point of analysis. Now Thatcher was born into K2 Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha. So her life was placed directly under the influence of the nodes right from her birth. And this exi this exhibits the power of Kala Sarpa. Okay. Ketu is in the fourth house. And it is uh, neither associated with or nor aspected by any planet. But the sign dispositor of Ketu, which is Saturn, is exalted in the Lagna. <laughs> Rahu is in the tenth house and is disposed by a dark moon in the eleventh house. 
So Rahu is only aspected by Saturn in whose nakshatra it is also sitting. Okay. Saturn dominates the chart. It forms Sasha Yoga on its own and Raja Yoga with Mercury, which has Digbala in the Lagna. And Saturn sits in its degree of exaltation. And although this is similar to Johnny Carson's chart, which we discuss right now, neither Thatcher's ascendant nor her first house planets occupy a Rahu nakshatra. So John Johnny Carson, he was very volatile in his personal life. But Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher, was as solid as a rock. And uh, as she was called, this Iron Lady was firmly in control of herself and led a highly disciplined life. Now, Thatcher's chart has no other yogas if you if you see it. Okay. So this is a remarkable state of affairs for someone who has a leading who was a leading politician of that era. So this illustrates the power of a perfect Kala Sarpa. Okay, this is a single strength in the chart, which has been amplified to a maximum extent possible. Okay. The only two exaggerated planets in the chart are the dark moon and an exalted Saturn, both of which are nodal, you know, Rashi dispositors in a friendly 311 relationship with each other. Okay. Now, many of the key events in Thatcher's life occupied in the periods of the nodes, you know, planets linked to the nodes or planets in exaggerated condition. So Saturn Dasha ran from the ran from the age of 24 to 30. In Sun Jupiter at the age of 26, she married. Okay. In Sun Saturn at the age of 28, she qualified for the bar. Okay. So she's, she started her own legal practice. And in Sun Mercury, she gave birth to twins. Chandra Dasha from the age of 30 to 40 saw the beginning of her public service and during Moon Jupiter at the age of 34, she was elected as a member to the House of Commons. Okay. So during Mars Dasha, at the age of 40 to 47, she demonstrated her administrative skills. In Mercury K2 Dasha, at the age of 45, she was appointed Secretary of State for Education and Science. But when she cancelled free milk in schools, she endured a very terrible public backlash. <clears throat> Rahu Dasha from the age of 47 to 65 saw her fulfill her political destiny. During Rahu Rahu at the age of 49, she won her party leadership. During Rahu Jupiter, she took voice coaching to improve her public image. Ironically, the following year, a journalist nicknamed her the Iron Lady, a label that stuck for the rest of her political career. Okay. In Saturn Rahu at the age of 53, she won the national election to become UK's first female prime minister. And at that time, you know, uh, Saturn and Rahu were transiting her 11th house while transiting Jupiter was exactly on her Rahu. So by Rahu Mercury at the age of 57, her approval rating had fallen to 23%. Why? Because you see, Saturn was transiting directly over her natal sun at that point. Okay. And, uh, in you know, this uh, negative view continued until her deft handling of the Falklands War that facilitated that facilitated her return to popularity as she was elected to a second term. Okay. In Rahu Ketu, between 1983 and 84, she introduced mass privatization in the UK, part of an economic program that became known as disparagingly as Thatcherism. Okay. In Rahu Venus, the day before her 19th birthday and second Saturn return, she survived a failed assassination attempt by the Irish Republican Army. In Rahu Saturn, at the age of 61, she was elected to an unprecedented third term as PM. Okay. Now, Jupiter Dasha at the age of 65 to 81, it saw the dwindling down of her public career as well as her personal life. And, uh, you know, during uh, Jupiter Jupiter at the age of 65, she resigned as the prime minister. But within two years, she was appointed to the House of Lords. In Jupiter Moon at the age of 76, she published her first book, Statecraft. And in Jupiter Mars, her husband died. So by Jupiter Rahu, she was experiencing the outset of, you know, she was experiencing the onset of dementia. Okay. And Saturn Dasha ran from the age of 81 to her death. So she died in Saturn K2. Okay. At the age of 87. And at the time of her death, period lords Saturn and K2 were, you know, were flanking their ascendance less than seven degrees on either side. Okay. So this is about K2 in the fourth house. Do you have any doubts regarding this? If not, we can stop. Okay. I don't think we have any doubts. All right, then. Thank you so much for joining in. 
I'll see you tomorrow for the live class on Jyotish Foundations. Okay. Namaste everyone. Om Gurave Namaha.